Hi, everybody. My name is Peter. Welcome to Our Worship Sound. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about specifically how to mix a pad sound in with a piano sound or a road sound or whatever you're trying to do in worship. And uh, I've shown you how to set up my particular keyboard with that functionality where you have um, a piano sound aside to, and you control the volume with this slider and then a Rhodes volume on this slider and then a pad sound and then a string sound. But if your keyboard doesn't have that same sort of capability, I want to show you another way that you can achieve the same sorts of results. And um, we're going to use software to do this. And specifically, I'm going to use Apple's MainStage software, which is available for $20 through Apple's uh, App Store. And uh, with that, and with an inexpensive hardware uh, MIDI controller, you can achieve the same sorts of results. So let me give you a quick demonstration of what I can do, just to playing the notes. All the sound is you're going to hear is going to come through the computer, nothing from my actual keyboard. I'm just going to control it through this. So, quick demonstration. Switch to road sound now. Add some strings. All right, so let's uh, go to main stage and I'll set, uh, show you how to get all that set up. All right, I've opened main stage, and this is what we see when we open it up. And we're going to start with a blank keyboard template. So we're going to go to keyboard and scroll down to keyboard starter. That will load up. And there are four different views that you see here in main stage. We have the layout, edit perform and full screen which I'm not going to go to um, but for the layout what we're going to do is you have to imagine like this is um, your view when you're sitting behind your keyboard on stage you have to have uh, representation of all the keyboards controllers everything that you're going to use to play sounds or to control sounds at your disposal you're going to have visual representations of those here in the layout so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my keyboard and I'm going to click on the All Controls tab. And there's a keyboard here, um, but there's another one I want to use that's already set up. I have an 88 key keyboard, so I'm going to drag the one that has an 88 number with it. So I'm going to bring that up in here. And as you can see, it also adds a modulation wheel and a pitch bend wheel. I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing and make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And as you can see, there are seven keyboard layers here. I don't want that many. I'm just going to go with four. So I'm going to come over here in the inspector and bring that down to four. And four is the number of sounds that we can layer on top of each other. Now, along with your keyboard, you probably also have a sustain pedal. So I'm going to drag up the sustain pedal. And you might also have a foot pedal for controlling volume or some other parameter. I'm going to create both of those, make them a little smaller, and then I'm going to drag the whole thing up a little bit if I can. There we go. All right, so now I've got my main keyboard in place. I'm also going to add um, some knobs. I've got my 25 key MIDI controller that I've used in other videos. I'm not actually going to use the keys to play sounds. When I play live, when I play live, I'm usually using these different keys to trigger different loops and tracks in another program. Um, so in controlling sounds, I'm only going to set up these eight round knobs. I think one of the big keys to using main stage and kind of grasping its power is to um, streamline your setup so that you have everything that you need to be able to get out of the program, what you need to get out of it, but not to have um, anything that just overcomplicates your setup. So I'm not actually going to use these keys. I'm going to use my main 88 keys for playing sounds, but I'm going to use these knobs to control the sounds. And so 
um, there, there is a spot where I could just dra- drag eight knobs up here at once. I'm going to drag one knob up here. And the reason for that is the, the text on this is pretty small. And so I like to make it a little bit bigger. And then once I got th- get that set, I'm going to copy that seven times. I just did Command C for copy and then Command V for paste. Now what I'm going to do is pretty cool. I'm going to take this one, drag it over here, and then instead of manually spacing these all out, I'm going to dra- click and drag to select them all. And then one of these buttons will distribute them evenly. So distribute items, evenly distribute items horizontally. Okay, so now they're spaced out left to right. Now we need to come up here, align the selected items along their bottom edges, and now we've got them all set. There's one more control I have up here that I want to use, and that's this master slider. Or it's just, you know, a vertical slider, I guess. I'm going to use it for a master volume, even though it doesn't have the, the buttons broken off of it. I'm going to come down here and grab a vertical fader. Bring it up here, and that's way bigger than I want it right now. So I'm going to drag that down. Bring that into line. Okay, so now I've got all the controls that I'm going to use from this MIDI controller. And to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm going to put a background on it. So I'm going to put that in place. I'm going to select a little different image. And then I'm going to drag it so it encompasses all the controls there. All right, now once I have that set, I can click and drag the whole thing and group them together. And the nice thing about that is now when I click on it, it's one entity that I can resize instead of resizing all the individual items. Okay, I'm also going to add hardware labels to these. So click on an individual item, come over here, check the add hardware label. This is going to be a master volume slider. This is going to be a volume controller for my piano. This will be for my road sound. This will be for my pad sound. This will be for my string sound. Now before I go any further, I want to let you know that I'm going to put this template, or by the time this video is posted, I will already put this video, or this template on my website, ourworshipsound.com. So you can just download it and, and kind of start from the end if you want. I want to go through the process so you can know how to alter the template to fit your needs if you so need. All right, this fifth um, knob, I'm going to title um, P Delay. And this is something that I'm going to cover in the part two of this video. But sometimes I, add, I like to add a little bit of delay sound to the piano or to the roads. These two I'm not going to use right now, um, but I'll set them up so I can use them uh, for something else later on if I need to. All right. There are two other things that I'm going to add. Now, I, at this point, I have all the controls that I'm going to need set up in my layout. But there are two other things I'm going to add. One thing is a MIDI activity button or light. So anytime I press keys on my keyboard or, or move knobs or move sliders, that's going to light up. And that could be really helpful in a troubleshooting situation where if I'm not getting the sound out, I can look at that light and know if the MIDI information is getting into the computer. So if it's something that I need to set up kind of on the front end or within the software setup. The other thing I'm going to add is a panic button. And you may have been in a situation where you played a note and somehow the MIDI got stuck on. And so what I'm going to do is bring just a button, not nine buttons, sorry. Or it's just, I mean, I'll just bring a drum pad up. Okay, I'm going to set this up to be a panic button. So I'm going to put a label on it. So what this does is if their notes stuck on, you can click the panic button and it'll clear all the MIDI data on there currently. Okay, so now that we have a visual representation of all of our hardware controls, we need to um, connect the visual with the actual hardware. So to do that, you need to come down. First of all, we're going to click on the keyboard. I'm going to click on Learn, and then just tap a few keys on my keyboard, and that links um, the software with the hardware. Now, you might, after that point, find that some of your other hardware, not going to worry about that, some of your other hardware is already linked. 
Now, if I uh, move my volume pedal, that's already linked. If I press my sustain pedal, I can see that that's also linked. So we don't have to worry about those. Um, same deal with my pitch bend and modulation wheels. These, however, I'm going to have to map. Okay, for my master slider, I'm going to click on that, click learn, move the fader, and it's set. Okay, now I'm going to keep one hand over here and just keep going down the line. The learn button is activated, so anything I do will be um, recorded. And then for these last two, even though I'm not going to use them on this template, I'm still going to set them up. For the panic button, I've been unsuccessful in, in assigning any of these buttons on my MIDI controller, so I'm just going to use the top note. And so now everything, I believe, is all set up. Um, there's one more thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to change the color of all this just for branding purposes. It's going to look much nicer. So I feel much better when everything looks really nice and tidy like that. That's just me. So, all right, we're not going to worry about overlapping objects because everything looks fine. So I'm going to come over here to the edit window. So now all of our hardware is linked with the, the software layout, but now we need to tell these items what to do. And we need to set up our sounds as well. Now, something that's really important and could be kind of confusing about main stage is that you have different levels of setups within main stage. You have what's called the concert level, I'm going to add something so you can see the next level, and that's called the set level. And then you have the patch level. And it's important to know that whatever you set up at the concert level is going to be there no matter what set or what patch you're on. Anything that you set up at the set level is going to be, the, it be in place no matter what patch you're on. Okay, And anything you set up at the patch level is not going to affect anything else. But it's important when you're assigning different things that you assign them at the right level. Now, everything that I'm going to set up in this particular template is going to go at the concert level because uh, I'm not going to be dealing with any other patches. I'm going to have, like, one setup, and it's going to stay the same. Um, in another video, I'll show you how to work with patches and uh, do that. So, anyway, I'm going to delete this patch and this set, and everything that, we get, everything that we're going to do is going to be at the concert level. The first thing I'm going to do is set up my four sounds, the piano, the roads, the pad, in the strings. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to the channel strips and I'm going to add channel strips. Four software instruments is what I'm after. Create. Okay, and then here this box is going to tell us everything that I was kind of just saying and that creating channel strips at the concert level you'll be will be active in all the patches in the sets in the concert. Controls mapped to this channel strip will supersede mappings in your patches. You can't override them. It tells you how to do that. Um, but basically, no matter what set of patch you're on, these sounds are going to be there. I'm going to make this mixer pane a little bit bigger. Okay, and I'm going to drag my effects sends over this way. And we'll talk about the effect sends in part two. This sound is going to be for piano and just for um, speeding up the video. I've already got a preset to our worship sound piano. I think it's probably a Steinway Studio sample that, that's come stock within main stage. This is going to be the road sound. And for the pad, I'll go ahead and show you how we're going to set up these, <coughs> excuse me, how we're going to set up these different sounds. So I've clicked on this channel strip, and to set the sound, I'm going to go over to the channel strip library. Click on synthesizers, synth pads, Come down here and select Blue Carpet. You might want to play with the EQ a little bit in Blue Carpet. Um, sometimes the low end can get a little bit overwhelming. But you can adjust that later. So that's the pad sound set up. And the only other sound we have to set up is the strings. So I'm going to click on the fourth channel strip. Come back over here to Pop Strings. Warm Strings section. And then now all of our sounds are in place. Now you may understand from previous videos that I like to alter the key range of my pad and string sounds a little bit. I don't like my strings to go all the way to the bottom, and I don't like the pad sound to go all the way to the top. So I'm going to change the key range, and first of all, let's go to the third channel strip, the pad sound, and I'm going to come over here to this window, the inspector window, to layer editor. And to set the key range, all I have to do is click high key, and then I'm going to click C4. 
That's the one right above middle C. So now you can see that the visual representation of that pad layer is now shorter so it doesn't go all the way to the top. I'm going to come over here to the strings, channel strip, and then come back over to the layer editor. Click the low key learn button. And now I'm going to click middle C. So now for any note that I play below middle C, the string sound won't play. Now I'm also going to um, set them up so I can mix the different sounds, like I wouldn't have the, the piano sound and the road sound on both at, at the same time normally. So I'll show you how to, to control the volumes of each layer as well. All right, so now we have our sound set up. We have our uh, layout all done. Now we need to map these different controls to do certain things. We need to tell them what they're going to control. To do that, we're going to click over here on each control. We'll start with the master slider. I'm going to click on map parameter and then we're going to go over here and I'm going to click on the master volume slider. Now when I move my master slider you can see that the um, the the layout changes as well as the uh, the actual functioning fader. Now if I move the fader all the way to the top with my hardware you can see that this goes up to plus six decibels. That's dangerous because that will cause the, the output to distort. To avoid that, we can come over here in the map parameter, right under the map parameter, and change the range max to zero. And that way, no matter how high I push the fader, it will stop at zero. That's pretty important. To set the other controls, I'm going to go over to piano. The map parameter is still lit, so I'm going to come over here and just click on the piano volume slider. Roads, volume pad volume, and string volume. Now if I unclick map parameter, I should be able to move my hardware buttons or knobs, <clears throat> and everything corresponds in the software. All right, now the, the piano delay and roads delay again, I'll set up in a different video, but now I believe we're ready to go. And we can come over to the perform window if we um, so choose, and let's see if this works. Oh, there's one more thing I want to take care of, and that's this panic button. I want to show you how to assign that to be a panic button. So we click on that, uh, and then I'm not sure why that made a sound, but anyway, we're going to try to make it so it doesn't do that. It's probably because it's assigned to my C key on the controller. But anyway, uh, under unmapped, we're going to come over and click on the actions, and then scroll down and then there's your panic option. So now, I don't know how to demonstrate this unless I have a stuck note, but now if something sticks and a, a sound is on, you should be able to click whatever button you have assigned to that panic button, and it will clear any notes. All right, so everything is set up. Uh, we were able to control um, the volume of different patches. Let's try it out. So I have the piano and road sound up now. Now I'm going to turn the piano down and bring up the road sound. And then I just move the knob to bring up the strings if I want it. And to show you, I have strings on middle C, but not on the B right below it. And I have a pad sound on the C4, but not on the notes above that. Okay, so that's how everything is set up within Main Stage. In part two, I'm going to show you a couple other tricks to get something that's uh, kind of neat out of it. And uh, just show you some different options for taking it one step further. So thank you for joining me. And uh, check out the, uh, the, the template on the website, ourworshipsound.com. And we'll be in touch soon. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.